well, it's been a while, the plague and all that has sort of upended everyone's lives, but uh, nonetheless, we're back with a new video, um, specifically as a, a kind of um, response, I guess, to a uh, comment made by Jake in Canada, who wrote to me saying that Paige's bearing in is stupid. Uh, so, um, is Paige's bearing in stupid? Well, I went to practice the other week and decided to do a couple of fights doing lots of bearing in to see what happened. Um, so all the sort of live action -y bits that you're going to see, it's completely unrehearsed. I, not the way I normally fight and the people I was fighting didn't know what I was doing or that I was trying to demonstrate anything. I was simply trying to see whether or not the bearing in actions actually work. So we'll have a look at that and we will talk about what it is that I'm actually doing and what's supposed to happen. So what is bearing in? So bearing is a series of techniques that you get in a lot of British broadsword manuals where the idea is that you engage your opponent's blade and push it aside in order to open up a line of attack. So from the outside guard, I would drive this way and then turn to deliver an inside cut. From the inside guard, I would drive it this way, turn to deliver an outside cut. So does that ever actually happen? And the answer is yes. Now here I'm doing it fast. I'm coming in with my bearing on the inside in this case and not giving Andrew much of a chance to respond quickly cutting within the guard. On the other hand, I can do it slowly. I can bear that aside, and if he doesn't react, simply turn my hand and strike to the head. So as you can see, yes, you can actually get that to work. That said, it doesn't work very often. Usually people do something, and the manuals actually expect the other person to do something. Most typically, the expectation is that they see not so much a threat as an opportunity. As I bear this this side, I open up my head for an attack. Now, this is what I'm expecting, and this is what I want them to do. Because the idea is that as they take the bait, I step back and take out the arm from below. On the inside guard, as I take it that way, I turn and take the arm there. And my favourite is if they're on a hanging guard, you press it this way and take the arm like that. Does that ever actually work? The answer is of course yes. And not only do you get the arm, but you can actually go for the head as well if you've got sufficient opposition. So here my sword is long enough that I can carry Andrew's attack while also simultaneously hitting him in the head. Bearing to the outside, waiting for the responsive cut, and then throwing the cut one, cutting off his attack, and in this case, I managed to reach him in the head as well. Now, if you're wondering what happens if they disengage underneath with a thrust instead of over the top with a cut, exactly the same thing. As long as I'm moving sideways and uh, traversing as I make my bearing and can get sufficient opposition against the thrust, it doesn't matter if I go under or over, it's the same result. So once again, you can say, yes, you can actually get that to work. And the thing is about it is that it is a safe thing to attempt because the worst that's going to happen is you're going to miss the arm. As they make your cut, you're going to cut at them, maybe hit the hilt and you're not going to get the arm, but because you're at a distance, it is a safe thing to attempt. Now, interestingly, that is not generally the first reaction that most modern broadsword people tend to do when faced with bearing in. Rather, the instinctive reaction is usually to seed with the pressure and cover up into a hanging guard. So as I bear the outside guard away, my opponent does that. Now I can't hit them, and they're safe. From the inside guard, they would bear into that, and again, I can't hit them. So that's kind of the most typical reaction that people tend to actually do 
in amongst the modern controls or table. That, however, is not sufficient. Okay, so this actually comes from Palisamata. So we've got a counter to this. If, as you bear, they see it into a hanger, we drop off the end and cut parallel to the blade up into the arm. And from the inside guard, as I bear, I would go that way. So you can actually get underneath the hanging guard into the arm, in theory. Now, can you actually pull that off in free play? So here I'm bearing to the outside and Grizzly is seeding into a hanging guard, covering up. Now, Grizzly has a tendency to roll out of that immediately with a cut, but in this case I've not even got to bother to wait for that and have a go at the wrist. I just slip off the end of his blade and cut upwards with a cut number three into the wrist. So again, yes, I can make that work. So that's good. Now, what other reactions might we get? Well, if Grizzly bears me aside, this is what I've generally said should be the correct response, is C, but turn it into an attack onto the arm. As they bear you aside, C, but turn it into an attack onto the arm. Okay, so that is an option, but it has to be to the arm and it has to be out of distance, because if, Instead, you do something like this, you're going to still be in distance to get him. And that also happens in free play. So in this case, as I bear Andrew aside, he seeds up into a sort of a hanging position, but instead of covering himself, he simply goes straight for a thrust to the body. Unfortunately, this is made without any sort of opposition, and as a result, there's nothing to stop from hitting him in the head simultaneously. But it is worth it pointing out that in every attempt of bearing in that I did in these two fights, that was the only double hit that resulted. So there you are. Bearing in is not stupid. It is, however, um, a low percentage bunch of techniques. Um, most of the time, nothing happens. Um, but it's a useful thing to have in your toolkit. It's uh, certainly a safe thing to attempt most of the time. And it's also one of these things that's gonna work a lot better with sharp swords than it is with blunts. Um, a lot of these sort of things that rely on actions on people's blades, whether it's uh, uh, sort of finding the sword and stringering an Italian rapier or winding in German longsword. When you've got slippery, blunt, feathery type blades that slip and slide off each other, they're not, don't act in any way the same way sharp swords do when their edges are in contact. Um, and having two sharp swords that you can catch on the edge and bear aside um, is going to force your opponent to make much bigger, more deliberate actions to free their sword. So it is definitely one of these things that works better in reality than it does in the sort of free play that we do for fun. Um, but nonetheless, I hope I have at least demonstrated that it's not completely stupid, okay? It's not one of my favourite, you know, sort of tactical approaches, but it is certainly part of the system and it has its place.